First of all, welcome to our first ever insignia display uh, being done virtually and filmed. Usually we do these uh, face to face. Paul, uh, my mayoral attendant slash driver slash, well, you're everything, aren't you, Paul? Mace bearer, um, mayoral ninja, basically. Um, goes out and we do these in groups and we have groups up to the parlour but unfortunately because of COVID-19 we can't do that at the moment so we thought we'd do it this way we'd create a video for you to be able to see the borough's insignia and find out more about the mayoralty and what I do as mayor. So who am I? I am Councillor James Hunt, I'm a councillor for Blackfin and Lamaby Ward, I've been a councillor for about 14 years now and last year I was deputy mayor so this year I've had a promotion I've gone from the, the little chain which you'll see in a bit to the bigger chain which is quite nice um, and I've always wanted to be mayor. Now that's a bit sad really, because most people want to be famous, they want to be rock stars, or they want to be footballers, or they want to do something more impressive, but I've always wanted to be mayor. And um, it really started when I met my first mayor, um, Councillor Colin Tandy, or former Councillor Colin Tandy, when he was mayor, and he presented me with my sailing badge when I was in the Cubs, which I was really impressed about. And I saw him, and I met him, and he had all his robes and everything on, and this great big gold chain, which I get to actually wear today. So, um, yeah. That's who I am. I think really, Paul, the important thing here is to find out about who you are and what you do, because actually, mayors come and go. And you know, we, we get replaced every year, but you're always here. So, Paul, come and tell us about you. Come, come over here. Come and join me, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, no, thank you. But now, obviously, the social distancing. Yes. We need to stay apart for this. So Absolutely. We should be staying about two metres apart. Yes. We're going to try and do that. I mean, obviously, I'm a bit portly. So I want to make sure that we, you know, we can keep that. But <laughs> so, yeah, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so as the Mayor said, my name's Paul. Um, I'm the Mayor's uh, chauffeur attendant mace bearer. Three parts to my job. Just very quickly, my nickname is Farmer. Um, and I'll tell you about that just quickly. Councillor Pallon gave me that nickname when she was the Mayor about five years ago. Uh, we went to a scout and there's a famous film called The Bodyguard. And I don't think she thinks I look like Kevin Cosner. But she said when I'm next to her, looking after her, she feels very, very safe. Oh, so Paul, are you going to lift me up and there's going to be music <laughs> and you're going to run out the building? Home, Absolutely. Man. Any other duties? I'd like to see you lift me up. So Paul. thank you, Councillor Pallon, for those kind words and for a, a cool nickname. Um, so the first part of my role is the Mayor's chauffeur. Um, I'm sure you all know what that means. It means a driver, but I don't like to be called the Mayor's driver. Um, as the mayor called me a couple of minutes ago, because anybody drives, but not anybody can be a professional chauffeur. Uh, Sorry, I've, Paul. I've, that's fine, Mr. Mayor. You'll, you'll learn it as we go. I will, Paul. Um, I've passed my advanced driving test, uh, ROSPA, to gold standard. And if you look that up on Google, less than 1% of 100 people that take the test uh, reach gold standard. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, so that's my chauffeuring duties. The attendant duties are to look after the mayor. And normally I would dress the mayor in the robes that you see to my right there. Uh, but thankfully, because of social distancing, the mayoress has agreed to dress the, the mayor in the robes. Uh, and if you look behind the mayoress, you'll see a sandwich and a packet of crisps and some water. Um, when I came into there, I didn't know if the mayor was coming straight from work. So as a good attendant would do, I got the mayor a sandwich and, and some water and a crisp. Oh, I didn't realise they were for me. I thought it was your lunch. No, oh, Mr. Lovely. Mayor, they're for you. Um, and that's what a good attendant does. It thinks outside the box, looking after your mayor. Uh, mace bearer is the final part of my duties. This is the mace, and bearer means to carry. Now, years ago, this was a fighting weapon of war. <clears throat> if it was like two, three hundred years ago, and we was in this position with the mayor and myself, there weren't any police, so I would use this as a weapon to protect anybody that come to try and take the mayor's gold or try to harm the mayor or take the chain of office. So this is obviously now just a symbol of the mayor's authority. That's why it's so big. Um, if you look on the, on the uh, front there, can you see that? That's the Queen's stamp. So if I lost the mace, not only would I be in trouble with the mayor, but I'd be in trouble with the Queen, because we'd have to go and see her again to get her to give us the Queen's seal. On the front of the mace is the coat of arms, which I'll tell you about in a moment. It's silver gilt and weighs about 11 kilos. It's quite heavy. I used to be six foot tall before I started carrying this. He was. Pause for laughter. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the fighting weapon of war. People say, well, why didn't they used to have a sword back in those days? Why the mace? Why didn't they have a sword back in those days? Well, thank you for asking, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Because the sword was good. If you had one person come to attack the mayor or the lord, a sword was quite effective. But if you had three or four people, you needed an item that you could wield and uh, very quickly, and without being too graphic, because I don't know my audience, 
Um, a sword, yes, with one person, but with lots of people, the mace was more effective yeah. until the guns came along. Once the gun came along, then the, the uh, mace become obsolete, really. And, and now I said it's just carried as a form of, uh, to show the mayor's importance. Quite often children say, have you ever hit anyone with it? And is there any blood on it? I say, no, of course not. I've, I've cleaned well, the blood uh, off. Let's not let the mayoress have it, because no. she might try and hit me with it. No, I can't believe that, Mr. Mayor. So that's the mace. Um, uh, what we're going to now is the uh, coat of arms, if that's okay with you, Mr. It Mayor. Is. I'll go this way and let you walk around. Thank you. So, just to tell you a little bit about the borough and the coat of arms, some schools um, have coat of arms and badges, and some posh families have coats of arms. So, um, this is the Bexley coat of arms. In 1965, we become the London Borough of Bexley. Before that, you had uh, Crayford and Eriff, Old Bexley, and Chiselhurst and Sickup. And you'll see those chains behind me there. And in a while, we'll zoom in so you can see those chains. So in 1965, like all boroughs, Lewisham, Wandsworth, they all became London boroughs and all amalgamated the four town councils. So at the top there is the White Horse of Kent. Now the reason that's on there, we are the London borough, we are a London borough, uh, but we're the last London borough until you go into Kent. So the Mayor's very lucky, gets invited into London, but also we get invited, in, invited into Kent. So the Invicta Horse. Underneath there is like a charity building. And Napoleon III had that built, and he used to live in a house called Camden House up on the Chiselhurst Common, and it's now called um, Camden Chiselhurst uh, Golf Club. Very, very posh golf, golf club. And uh, he lived in there, and he had that built, and that was called the Gateway to Kent. And the bicycles and the horse and carts used to go through there, and he loved that building. But obviously, once they invented the double-decker bus, you can guess what happened. It got wedged. I imagine. And they had to, so what they would do today, they would have built a roundabout and we could have kept that fantastic building. But back in those days, they suddenly demolished it because it was, uh, it was no good now for the big lorries and the, the buses. Uh, the gateway to Kent. Under there is a knight's helmet and that's for the Knights of Erith. Now we know very little about the Knights of Erith, only that they were people that were born of noble blood. And there's a fantastic film called A Knight's Tale. It's about a young man who wants to become a knight. He's got all the skills. He goes in all the competitions, but they find out that he wasn't born of noble blood. And uh, so he gets into trouble. So, yes, it's the knights. There's a little plaque down by the riverside in Erith. It says the knights of Erith um, uh, lived here, stayed here for a while. Um, what I heard is that they used to joust. You know jousting when you go through with the horses? Yeah. And, yeah, and they used to knock each other off the horse. And whoever used to win, used to be able to go through the McDonald's drive-thru on the ah. horse, yeah. And if you lost, you went through the uh, KFC. And luckily, for the purpose of this video, they're now open again. Yes. They've been closed for a long time, which has been difficult. Well, I don't, I don't think that's true, Mr Mayor, somehow. I think that if you lost, you went through McDonald's, and if you won, you went through the KFC. Ah, yes. Okay. Zinger so, Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath the uh, helmet is the, uh, the best part of the uh, coat of arms, I feel, my favourite part, is the Charter Oak Tree. Now they signed the charter in 1937 uh, for the old borough of Bexley to become a municipal borough. And there is a video of that on um, the bygone years. Fantastic if you can see that. And there was thousands of people in Danson Park. And so it, it was signed under that tree between uh, Danson House and the lake. And it's all fenced off now. Now when I started doing this job, Mr Mayor, I used to say, oh, it's over 250 years old. But now it's getting more to nearly 300 years old. Because I've have been you here. been here that long? Paul? I have, Mr. Mayor. Makes me, wow. Makes me feel very old. And I thought you were only 65. <laughs> I've had a hard life. You have had a hard life. In 1987, the younger people watching this won't know this, but you can ask your mums and dads, a great storm swept through Bexley. And in one hour, it came through Lewisham, Bromley, Greenwich, and it hit Bexley. I remember. It came out the other side, do you remember? I do. 15th of October. I remember the 15th because that's our payday. Uh, so it's an easy date for me to remember. Mr Mayor, how many trees do you think come down? Uh, <laughs> you never told me there was a question uh, and answer session on this. Uh, just put your thing. Thing. How many trees come down in Bexley in one hour? In one hour? In one hour. 50. 50? 50. <laughs> Maris? Half of them. Half of them? Oh, good answer. Oh, very good. It was 23,000. 20, seriously? And one. So and one and one twenty three thousand and yes, one. Yes, that's true. Because in the official book that I read it from the council's notes, yep. they said twenty three thousand trees came down. I spoke to a gentleman last week. He said his tree came down, uh, and he never told anyone. 
So that's 20, 20 pounds. Not very so expensive. if anyone else has had a tree come down in that storm, ask your mums and dads, write into them here, and yeah. then we can get those figures correct. 23,002 maybe. Yes. So underneath the tree is the three rivers of Bexley, the River Thames, the River Cray and the River Shuttle. There are our three rivers. Uh, the cog at the bottom represents our factories that we've got in the borough. Um, there was more many years ago, Pirelli tyres, calendar cables, um, VCD Vickers ammunition factory, they employed 15,000 people. So it was important in those times that we had big factories that could employ all our mums and dads and our granddads. Our so. boroughs had, had a great industrial past and it's getting better. We've got yes. lots of new factories on yes, the Yes, yes, it's on the, on the climb again, which is fantastic. So either side of the uh, coat of arms are two stacks. And that was from Lord Erdley, and he was a very, very wealthy man, but he was a very kind and generous man. And he was so posh that his family had their own coat of arms. Yeah. And amongst the coat of arms were these two stakes. And he gave money to build the churches and to build the schools and that play area up in Upper Belvedere. He really, really did give lots of money, yeah. So he was so generous, the council said, look, let's put his stakes on our coat of arms, and then we can always remember Lord Erdley. Uh, last but not least is the council's motto, which came from the old Crayford coat of arms, which is boldly and rightly. Now, I, I can only talk about the department that I work for. I don't know about brown bins or the potholes or street lights, any of those things. But with the mayoralty, we do it boldly and rightly. And today, not big time Charlie, but we've got all the chains out, we've got the mace out. It would be quite easy just to get the roads out, wouldn't it? But the mayor said, let's do it properly. No, let's, so get it, let's get it all out. Let's get the silver out. So there's the uh, coat of arms. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're OK. Right, so if I could just ask the mayor a couple of questions that the children normally ask at this point. I've got a couple written down. Oh, good. And this is the point where you see the terror in my eyes. So, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Have oh. you always wanted to be mayor? I know you touched on this earlier. Yeah. And if not, when did you realise that you wanted to be the Mayor of Bexley? So earlier on, I told a story about when I met former Councillor Colin Tandy. Well, yep. I also met another former Mayor, um, Ron Briley. Was Ron Briley? Ron Briley was yep. there, yes. So uh, two times, so I met Colin first, and I was in the Cubs, and I wanted to uh, I wanted to be Mayor. I met him, great guy. In fact, actually, when I became a Councillor, he was still a Councillor, so I got to spend time with him. Uh, I used to sit with him occasionally on planning meetings, where he talked a lot about flood defences and, and trains interestingly enough. Okay. And um, I met Ron as well because okay. it was in the old parlour in the old building and I had uh, I got a, an Education Achievement Award when I was at school. I went to Westwood and he presented it to me and I was one of the first first kids from school to get one. So, um, okay. yeah, okay. I really liked the gold. I was impressed. Right, yes. Yeah, for me, Mr Mayor, the, the chain of office is everything. The chain of office, when you've got that on, you know the mayor's arrived, for me, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, now that you're the mayor... Oh, you know when I arrived, I'm usually like a metre behind you, so, you know. <laughs> two metres behind you, thank you, yes. Yeah. Uh, now that you're the mayor, does the ice cream van stop right oh. outside your house? Uh, as you might guess, I've got an affinity with ice cream anyway, Paul. Um, the ice cream van uh, does stop outside, but I think it's purely because we've got a parking space outside that you can slip oh, into. Okay. Unfortunately though, I don't get any freebies, and that's the great you thing. Get an extra I, flake. I don't get an extra flake. I would love an extra flake, and if you're watching this, I would love an extra flake. Fantastic. Uh, do you live in a mansion, Mr Mayor? No, I don't, Paul. Uh, I, 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 I did check when I become mayor whether or not I got the keys to dance and house, and apparently not. It's not it seemed acceptable. Um, but then we have converted the top floors into offices and there aren't any beds anyway. But now I live in a very modest end of terrace uh, house in Blackburn. Okay, Mr. And what are your chosen charities for this year? So this year, Paul, I have set up uh, the Mayor's Appeal, um, which you can go to if you go to www.thebexleyappeal.co.uk. Is it .co.uk or .com? It's .co.uk. Um, and so fundraising for my appeal, I've this year decided to predominantly sponsor free call areas, which are Bexley's Looked After Children. As a corporate parent, and you're a corporate parent too in Bexley, we had between us, between 200 and 300 children, which we look after. And they're our looked after children, those um, really special kids that the council has to care for. And so I decided that I want to raise some money to look after them, give them some extra events and stuff this year, and give them as much back as we can. And then the other two charities are Crossroads Care and Carer Support Bexley, because I really want to support groups this year especially because of the coronavirus and um, the situation we're all in, that actually look after and care for our vulnerable. And those two charities as well support and look after the most vulnerable residents in our borough. So I'm really keen to make sure we can do extra. 
Brilliant. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Well, so, so, Paul, what was the website? It's www.thebexleyappeal.co.uk. Fantastic. So apart from the mayoress being a fantastic support to you, which oh. I know she is, does the mayoress have a day job? She does. You do, don't you? I do. I'm do a nurse. Do you want I'm me to talk about it? You can talk about it. No, no, you come tell us. Oh, I talk about it. I'm a nurse. I work at Queen Mary's in Sinkup as part of the Dartford and Gravesham team. But you've, been, you've had a bit of a difficult time recently because of coronavirus, and uh, I, I know you don't like talking about it, and I'm making you laugh now, and I'm so sorry. But actually, Paul, um, Chris has been, um, a whole team from Queen Mary's were redeployed to Darren Valley. Right. And they've been working on the ICU um, at Dartford, or ITU, I always get that wrong. Is it ITU or ICU? Either or works, but okay. myself and all my ODP colleagues and theatre nurses have been redeployed to intensive care. So where we'd normally look after you asleep during surgery, we've been looking after you asleep while you're ventilated, hopefully recovering from COVID-19. It's been a really tough job, but they've done a fantastic job. Yeah. So one of the things I want to do this year is to actually thank them as a support woman. We're going to do a little bit more oft as the year goes on in thanking our NHS workers and key workers and delivery drivers and everyone else who've come together, especially mm -hmm. those people that have delivered bread. Yes. We went and visited a bread factory on uh, Monday. Yes, Hovis. Hovis. Hovis bread. They've been delivering thousands of loads of bread to the borough to give out. Give them free from Hovis. All for yes. free, absolutely, to support our residents. It's been fantastic. Yeah. So, brilliant. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. So a couple to go, Mr Mayor. What do you hope to have achieved at the end of your mayoral year? Um, to start with, not to be killed by the mayoress is always a good one, so I'm going to make sure that she knows absolutely everything we're doing this year. Yes. I have a bit of a reputation for not writing things down, so uh, I at least make sure that I put things down on my, on my calendar. But what do I want to achieve this year? I want to be able to say that I've left at the end of this year as mayor, because obviously we only do it for a year, I want to have I've done all I can to support Bexley, to have done everything I can to support our residents and got the community together. The coronavirus and everything we've gone through recently have brought the community together. And I want to make sure that going forward we keep that going, to keep the volunteers going, so that we've got volunteers that are really active and part of the borough again, and really just to support the vulnerable, because we have got some of the most vulnerable residents living in our borough and in London, and I want to make sure that we look after them. Fantastic. Okay, Mr Mayor, last question. Uh, are you able to travel in the mayoral car at the moment? Um, and if you do, how do you keep yourself and Paul safe? And and also, where have you been? Who you wrote this? Did, did you have oh, some people write these questions in? So, um, up until last Monday, we couldn't use the mayoral car because uh, there's been some rules around it. But actually, uh, for your ingenuity, Paul, Paul created a screen using clean film and plastic in the back of the car. So I'm separated in the back of the car from Paul in the front. And also I've got a face mask. So I wear a face mask in the back just to protect you. And we've got some spares as well um, for you. But um, we've been able to do that and go out. And so on Monday we went and visited uh, the Hovis baker Bakery yeah, over yeah. in, um, it's North Heath, isn't it? I keep calling it here if it's yes. North Heath. Um, I heard that as well because the shop was just there. Um, and we went and visited and we thanked the team there. They've given thousands of loaves of bread to the borough during the past few months. and. Really, it was a case to go and meet them and say thank you. And then we went and visited some businesses in Black Fen, but we also got a chance to go and meet the team here that have been running the food hub at the council. And some of the elections team and the regen teams have been coming together and putting food parcels together every day throughout this whole crisis. And we went out and delivered some, didn't we? we yes, you and me, we, we went yes. out in the car with our screen, yes. and we went and met some families in Slade Green and some families in Welling. And there was another one actually over in North End as well. Yes. So it's Slay Green. And we went out and we met them and we had a chat. And, uh, and then we went and met the businesses in Black Fen. We went and saw the, uh, the Premier Autos and we went to the HB Academy and we, we met the team there and saw them getting back to normal. Because at the moment we really need to get the borough back to, and running again. And if we watch this video in a year's time, I hope that we can look back on it and think actually it's up and running and we found a new normal and things are slowly getting yeah, because you're, Back to normal. you're visiting those um, businesses and putting it on your Facebook page, Mr. Yep. Mayor. Some of those pages are getting 9,000 hits. They are. That is priceless for some of these businesses. My first video, let Paul, people know they're my, back open. My first video that I did welcoming and, and telling everyone about what I was doing and thanking all the volunteers, I think actually I got to about 12,000 people in the end. I did, a, I did a tweet the other day and it reached 48,000 people. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. It's all very odd. Yeah, but that's fantastic. Publicity. I thought it might be my lockdown haircut that is uh, is the thing. You know, I really can't wait to be able to get my haircut again because it's. I thought you were wearing a crash helmet. Thank you, Paul. You you're wait till we try and get that hat on. You're later because it's okay. Well, that leads us nicely on, Mr. Mayor. Uh, normally, as I said, I would dress the mayor as the mayor's attendant. I'm sure you guys will get dressed by yourselves in the morning. 
but you'll see whatever goes on with the mare, all the, all the um, cuffs and the jabot, you'll see that the mare needs an attendant. So because of social distancing, the mare has, has kindly offered to dress the mare. Because you live in my bubble, don't you, dear? Yes. So, thank you, mare. Oh, I love you. So what we do is we'll take the mare's chain off and lay it on this cushion to keep it safe. No pressure, Miris. Do we get in trouble if I drop it? No, you get in trouble if you stuck in my hair, though. I'll really need to get this cut. <laughs> it's been done, right? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So. Oh, now I'll throw it. <laughs> so the first item to go on in the mayor's robes <coughs> will be the jabot. And that's like a, a bib. Now, I'm not saying that the mayor is a messy eater. Oh, come on, Paul. You saw me eat last year as deputy mayor. You know I'm a messy eater. I'm trying eater. to be polite, Mr. I mayor. know you are. Hundreds of years ago, when you'll see the mayor put the robes on, they didn't have dry cleaners. If we have a spillage nowadays, that we can go to the dry cleaners and specialists are going to get... I think it's a bit cheap. a bit gravy on this, too. No, Mr. Mayor. No way. It's only me who wore it last, so I won't worry too much. Um, so, yeah, so uh, if, when they were eating their Kentucky Fried Chicken on McDonald's 300 years ago, it was probably pheasant or chicken. They would be tearing it apart because there was no knives or forks. They would use that to wipe their hands to protect the robes. Next to go on are the mayor's cuffs. And although all these items look very nice and frilly, they did actually have a purpose. So again, when you're indoors, when you have a bath, you pull the plug out and the water disappears. And that's down to, uh, partly down to Sir Joseph Bazalgette who um, was instrumental in bringing the sewage system and the pipes to London. If you get a chance in your local, get down to the Crossness Engines in Thamesmead. It's a fantastic museum down there. Um, so all your toilet water, years ago there was no flushing system, it all went out into the street. Your dinners, when you couldn't finish your dinner, you scrape it all out into the street, out the top window. Now you know how Brussels sprouts smell when they're fresh. You imagine when they've been in the street for three months and they're hitting people that are in the streets, all in their hair, it was ghastly. So when the smells came through the windows, the mayor would sprinkle, or um, the lord would sprinkle perfume onto the cuffs, and then they would sniff, and it would take away the horrible smell. If you were doing my job and you was in the servants' quarters downstairs, you'd be trying to eat your dinner like that, because the smell would have been horrendous. Well, literally just like that? It, literally like that. Right. Because the, the, the uh, mace bearers didn't have robes and stuff, do you know what I mean? So um, there's the mayor with his cuffs and his yellow. Yes, yes. Next to go on is the mayor's robes. Oh. Very, very heavy. And that's where I said about my um, part of my role as the attendant. When the mayor's got these on, yes, the mayor's quite capable of going to get a glass of water. But if he's on the top table or he's giving out certificates, he can't just go wandering off. So a good, an at a good attendant will keep an eye on the mayor and make sure that he's, he's fed and watered and make, doesn't get too hot in the robes. So is that what you're meant Mary, to do? Should I could just move you that way slightly. I don't, I don't remember you going off much last year. I mean, uh, no, I'm joking, Paul, you're great. He was only the deputy, Mr. Mayor. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Deputy Mayor if you're, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor, even if you're watching this, don't listen to him. So if the camera can just pan to the, Mr. Mayor, if we can go that way just like, if the camera can pan to these chains, these are kept in a vault at the civic offices, um, and it takes two people to open that vault. Um, so you've got the old deputy mayor's chain, the um, Chislehurst and Sidcap chain. Remember I said in 1965 when there were four town councils? Um, then you've got three chains for area and a Crayford chain. So um, quite a bit of wealth there. That's why they're kept locked up in a huge vault and it takes two people to open that vault. Um, and just I'll show you this picture. This chap uh, was mayor of Erif, so if you can see that on the camera, in... Um, 1960-61, and there was a young man that worked downstairs, and he told me that his granddad was the mayor of Erith, or his great granddad, I think it was, and he brought me some pictures in. Aww. So fantastic, and they go with the chain. And his name, Miss Councillor Locke, is put on one of these links. They used to tap, inscribe the name onto the. Um, do I get my name onto this one afterwards? Uh, you don't, Mister Mayor, because oh. we don't do that. So, if anyone at home got any pictures. Of, of grandparents or great parents that were mayor of Bexley area for sick or anything like that, please send them in to the mayor mm. and we can put them with our display. So the next thing to go on are the mayor's gloves. Oh, well the gloves can go on, that's what I missed. The mayor's gloves can go on and that's quite poignant today because of where we are with the coronavirus. Hundreds of years ago there was 125 people a day dying in the streets of London from Brussels sprout smells. 
but there was typhoid and all sorts of diseases. I've always said Brussels sprouts are bad for yeah, you. Yeah, I, I, I don't like them. And so when the mayor would leave their house, today, the likes of David Beckham and all these famous people, they're away, they're, their houses are off, off land. But years ago, literally, you could have a wealthy person and their doorstep would lead out into the streets of London. So there would be, for want of another word, I don't like this word, but peasants, poor people, people with diseases. So the mayor wouldn't, or the Lord wouldn't choose to shake hands with these people, but... I if, don't have a problem shaking anybody's hand, because I live in an end of terror, so I don't live in a bit, sorry. No, but we're talking, yeah, but we're talking hundreds of years oh, ago, okay, that's fine. when there was proper disease. But today, Mr. Mayor, you would wear your gloves to shake hands with people, because we're in that, that place with the coronavirus. We are, so absolutely. So the next we've, to go we've back even stopped on, up on hand sanitizer, haven't we, Paul? Absolutely. So the next to go on is the mayor's chain, that goes back on, and it's held in place by some ribbons. My hair again. And either side of the, the, the robes, if you see, there's two parchment pockets. Uh, and that's not for the mayor's packed lunch. I'm sure you guys have all got tablets and laptops. Well, hundreds of years ago, they didn't have that. So the mayor would be on a stagecoach um, going from town to town, and he would write a letter to somebody, roll it up into a scroll, tie a piece of the ribbon around it, and they would slide into those parchment pockets there, and he would keep it safe. If you see over there, get back. Yeah. Get back. If you see the fur on there, that's hamster fur. I had to kill a hundred hamsters to make that. <laughs> no, I didn't Are you really. serious? <laughs> no, I didn't really. Um, we say that when we have the little ones in, try and see, see if we can make them cry. No, we would never use real fur today. Oh, that's okay then. Again, hundreds of, I know I keep saying it, but hundreds of years ago, if you was wealthy and you had the robes and the chain, you wanted the people to see your wealth, you would use real fur. And it was a Canadian rodent called a musquash. A musquash? A musquash. A musquash? A musquash. Wow. That was, uh, so it's a really unlucky rat because it had beautiful fur. And so they used to use that fur to make the robes. We bought these robes about 25 years ago. We'll never be allowed to buy any more robes. So I've got to make sure that I look after these. And you'll see just to the side there, we keep the robes kept covered at all times. They're always hung up. And as so, you do, Paul. She hasn't finished yet, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Oh. So the final piece to go on for the Mayor's robes is his hat. Funny. Now, it's got some gold braid, and the gold braid goes to the right-hand side. No, Mr. Mayor, that isn't the correct way to wear it. No, but it covers my hair up, Paul. <laughs> Honestly. It's going to be a year and a half. Oh, um, so, yeah, so the, the braid goes to the Mayor's right, and we believe that when I carry the mace, it goes on the right-hand shoulder. When I lay the mace down, the head of the mace goes to the Mayor's right hand side and we believe that years ago 50 even 50 60 years ago if you was left-handed they thought you was odd they, they really so they used to tie the hand behind the back the school teachers to make the children right with their right hands today we know that people with left hand aren't odd well no odder than anybody else well no so but that's why we think that I everything goes both. yeah ambidextrous i that? am ambidextrous oh, really fantastic oh i've got a quick question yes am i got any special powers as mayor can i do anything you know yeah, I, I don't know. We've already said that I can't move into Dance and House, but you know, can, can I do anything? You know, have I, can I put people in prison or anything? Uh, no, I don't think so, Miss Mayor. It's more of a ceremonial role. Mm. The, okay. But touching on that, Miss Mayor, oh. is a good point because the Mayor isn't allowed to get into any political arguments, debates, and that's where the skills come in from a good attendant that you never embarrass the Mayor, but I've had it a couple of times when it starts getting a bit heated and they're talking about something political and you've got to somehow move the mayor along without seeming oh, to be rude. I will not do politics this year. Fantastic, thank you. So there's the mayor in his robes. Um, if I can come across there, Mayoress. Yep. When the mayor's in his robes, I occasionally have to wear my robes. Oh, very smart. I would never put my robes on if the mayor isn't in his robes. So you'd never see a mace bearer in his robes if the mayor wasn't present in his robes. So my hat with the braid to the right hand side. And now we really do look like something from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Absolutely. Normally kids down there say they look like Dick Turpin. But what I would say, I know it's a funny outfit and when you look you think, oh, it's a bit of... There's lots of bakers and pizza delivery drivers, doctors, dentists, bank managers, you know, lots and lots of different jobs, dustmen. But in Bexley there's only one mace bearer, only one person that's allowed to carry this. So I'm proud of that, Mr Mayor. Oh, so oh you're doing a great job. It that. goes on my right hand shoulder, as I said. The mayor would be behind me. We'll keep our distance because of self-distancing. But normally the mayor would be a little bit closer and the mayoress could stand beside the mayor. And we would process into Buckingham Palace or into Westminster Abbey. And what we say to the mayor always, when we go to Westminster Abbey, there's hundreds of people 
because they lots of Americans don't have any um, any of this tradition anymore, and they love to see this. All 33 mayors processing in. Nobody is allowed to walk in between the mayor and the mace. If somebody has to cross urgently between all the mayors, you make sure they go behind the other mayor and in front of the mace. No one's allowed to cross and break the seal between the mace and the mayor. And we say to the mayor that if the procession stops, make sure you keep an eye because the mayor of Bromley kept walking and walked into the back of his mace. He was in front of me and he got a cut eye and a bloody nose. Last year? So, no, it was a couple of years oh, ago, okay. Mr Mayor. So there we go, Mr Mayor. That's, oh. uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's the insignia display. I uh, hope you found it interesting. If I could just ask the Worshipful Mayor of the London Borough of Exeter to sum up, that would be fantastic. You want me to sum up? Uh, close the close I was going to say, you're going to give me the hardest job now. Honestly, it, it's been interesting doing it this way. Um, we do hope that at some point we can actually get you to come up to the office if we can to do this in person. Uh, we're going to work on this. We've got a year to get this uh, right. We're going to work on the pattern, aren't we, Paul? Yeah. This is actually our first go at it as well, so I think we've done really well. Thank you, going to say if, if they wanted to write it? Yeah, no, absolutely, they... absolutely, Paul. Don't worry about that. I just really want to thank you because you do oh. this. This is your this is your thing. You do this all the yeah. time, and you know it's a very special part of Bexley to have you doing this because I can't do it. Oh. And I, I tried the other night to do it with some some cups, and it was embarrassing. Okay. Um, no, but thank all you, I can say is actually, if you've got any questions. Do write to me if you email mayors.office at bexy.gov.uk, but you can find it on the website. If you Google Mayor of Bexy, you can find us. And send us questions. If you've got any questions about regalia, sorry, insignia, um, if you want to come and see it at some point, we'll try and get you to come up and see it. But the video is there. Look at the video. If you've got any questions, send them in because we're really happy to, uh, to have a chat with you. Paul? Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayoress. Job done.